Hare Krishna, I thank you very much for the, all for coming. And I'm very enthusiastic to give my last class on the art of transformation. I think I have something very valuable uh, to share, which is uh, making my presentations, uh, bring, bringing them all together, all the loose ends. I, uh, we don't have so much time, so I will talk very concentrated. You will have to put your alert alertness on, <laughs> but it will be uh, clear and simple also. Mm -hmm. Mantra. Uh, mm, I will again uh, mm, request you to to tune yourself into the chanting. It will be much easier for you if you are really clearing the inner space. Uh, 
which may be overcrowded with the last discussions or the things you have to do. Like for instance, I, I will have to travel very soon to Italy mm, and I hear it's very busy, the airports and so on. Uh, and uh, I'm flying with a super cheap airline who, who does not allow all the luggage which I have, so I will have to use my little, little devotee intelligence how to get the people to let me go anyways. Uh, so my, my, my inner thoughts are crowded with such things mm, and you, you're, you may be crowded with other things, but when we speak of the art of transformation, we make Ours, we bring ourselves in a receptive mode. And we, I'm trying to show you something. And we try to fine tune ourselves. Now it's a little out of tune. And this is better. So please sit carefully. And bring your mind to the simple activity to just listen to yourself chant sincerely. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Yeah. 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, 
I would like to start my uh, last lecture on the art of transformation uh, with um, with points which I have made in the last few uh, not here on the retreat but in in other places and I uh, request you if you have heard them already please uh, uh, know that I need to make them again because perhaps you we might forget them but there's another reason also I want to bring this uh, to um, let us say to a, a, a way uh, or an art or an understanding which you might uh, have uh, mm, uh, that, that, that will help you very much in your spiritual life. Mm, I talked while I was here on the retreat with many of you and mm, uh, there was one very nice young devotee to whom, uh, who was thinking obviously of initiation. And other devotees had asked him, who's your spiritual master? And they had suggested, why not him, why not him, and like this. And the devotee felt pressured uh, by these well-intentioned questions and uh, wanted to ask me uh, what I thought about uh, this. And I, uh, I told him from my own perspective, I said, uh, See, it's easy to change the name. Uh, it happens in the time of half an hour mm, in an initiation ceremony. It's also very easy, easy to change the eating style. I, d I just mm, uh, stopped being a vegetarian. I became a vegan person. For those who don't know the subtle difference, do not be afraid. I'm not eating meat. I'm not eating meat. It is. <laughs> Um, it is also vegetarian, but certain things are not taken there. It's easy to do this. I, I did it in a little uh, while. To change your hairstyle, very easy. You can ask Go Krishna or Gora Hari is very expert. It goes whoop in 10 minutes, it's all gone. Um, <laughs> it may be a little bit more difficult to change the dress, like. Uh, I, I, Doti was for me very difficult to put on and I can imagine for ladies to put on a zari must be also a little challenging at first but it can be learned quite easy. It's a little bit more differ, difficult to change your friends because sometimes we really have good friends who are non-devotees and um, so on and Sometimes it's not easy to get along with every devotee, so to say. But to change the heart, that is something you cannot do on the surface level. You can change your name on the surface level, haircut, eating styles, dress, friends. Friends is a little difficult to do on the surface level, but I hear there are also very superficial relationships, so it is possible. Um, uh, but what we are looking for in Krishna consciousness is a real transformation, a transformation uh, mm, of, a, of the heart means really a change of heart. We will see this. It's not a cultural change that being a Westerner, now I'm, I'm taking a little bit uh, to the Indian style of eating, dressing, and to the Hare Krishna haircut and so on. No, 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 no. It has to, it goes much deeper. It's the change of heart. And the problem is, you can't fake it. You can remain the same when you change your name. You can remain the same with the haircut, with the, even with the dhoti and so on. But you, <laughs> either you change your heart or you don't change it. it is, there's nothing, that you have to, it, it's serious. 
And uh, therefore I told the devotees, don't, don't be so much after changing names and haircuts and these things. Uh, think, uh, see where your heart will change. See also when you later make a decision from which guru you want to learn, uh, decide who can help you to move forward in this transformation of the heart. Don't look for someone who is, um, anyways, I don't, uh, let's express it positively. Mm. See, there is a little problem with us Westerners, we look for validation, social validation. We want that people like us. We want that people make an impression on us. We are very interested in optimizing our social mm, networks, our uh, web page, uh, and so on. The, this outside, this need for outside validation may sometimes also be there in the Krishna conscious movement. When we join this movement, we, we go so much away from ourselves. Instead of practicing self-realization and coming closer and closer to who we really are on our different levels, we become more and more estranged from each other. And what I have seen over the years is, as we grow up and try to maintain the facade which everyone will like. At one time, the person inside suffers so much that something happens where the facade explodes. And then we say, oh, 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 he has blooped. He has blooped already 20 years before. And you know, he, when he made the decision to just be the person everyone expects him to be, he went on this road of creating a tension between who he really is and who he pretends to be in order to be validated by others. Mm. Mm. One, I met one older devotee days before his pass, uh, passing away from this world, and he said to me with, a, if, uh, with an expression in, the, in his eyes, he said, Tomorrow, today I looked in the mirror and I did not know the person who looks back at me from the mirror. I always only cared for the person which others see, the facade, but I did not work on myself. I did, do not even know who, who I am as a human being and as what to speak of uh, my, my eternal identity. Uh, I, I've never thought about this. So this, what you have heard, this art of transformation mm, and the various perspectives which you have heard from the three speakers, Jayadvaita Maharaj, uh, Keshava Maharaj, and uh, uh, the, the yeah, myself, um, this is very important uh, 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 stuff. You may now think this is a lecture like every other lecture. Yes, I've heard it many times, let's forget it and eat prasadam. This you may think, uh, but n no, uh, it is important that you think what does this have to do with me? And if some point made sense to you, then, then please do it. I will give you one point today, which for me has become my guiding principle, my North Star, my inner GPS, so to say, for my own uh, transformation, which I'm interested to pursue every day. Every day, yes. So, good. Let us first now get into the theory a little bit. Uh, and then we go into the practice. The Hari Bhakti Vilas is a book which was mm, uh, compiled by Gopal Bhatta Goswami and edited by Sanatan Goswami. 
Uh, some say it's the other way around, but um, it, what is important for us is it is in Gaudiya scripture. It's in our tradition. It's our book, so to say. It's not something outside. Gives a very ni this work gives a very nice mm, uh, 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 example, which happens to be very close to my own heart. It's a example about alchemy, something I was madly interested in before I came to Krishna consciousness. It's um, alchemy is a, uh, studies the processes which are necessary for transformation. It does it on the level of uh, gross matter, there you change ordinary metal into gold, but it does it does also Mm, the, the real purpose of alchemy is on the subtle, mat, subtle level where you change your character into a wonderful, developed being. Mm, so, uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas uses alchemy as a process. It says, as ordinary bell metal, bell metal is this metal, you know, this are the, it's, it's uh, a mixture of brass and zinc, I, as far as I know. I hope I'm right. Mm, it's, you can already, when you clang it together, you, you know it's, uh, yes, yes, this is not a first class cartel. Um, as ordinary bell metal, when treated with a certain alchemical process, can be transformed into pure gold. Similarly, an ordinary person can transform through the process of initiation into a twice-born person with a goal-like pure heart. I, is the analogy clear to you? Yeah, ja, Chita Malini? Du verstehst das, oder? Good. Mm, because she's mostly German-speaking. Good, then I will not waste our time on making it clear. This, my dear devotees, refers to a profound change. In Zurich I had explained, I had heard from a physicist that there are very strong laws of nature, you call one the strong force, which keeps the finest particles of matter, the molecules and atoms, in certain molecular structures, so that this is wood and this is uh, metal and so on. If these structures change, it comes, there's a meltdown of matter uh, and, and, and then, then also the matter changes. No? So initiation is such a strong force which melts down the materialistic uh, personality so that a new personality comes. Now you may say, well, stop, 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 Sachinanda Swami. You said to change the name is, is only on the surface level and it will not do the job, but that's what initiation is, isn't it? I get a new name. Everyone will ask me, I have to change my Facebook page with a <laughs> new name. It's all about the name, no? My dear devotees, if it would be all about the name, then initiation would not be called the process that changes an ordinary person into an extraordinary person. There must be more in initiation than getting a name and belonging to the Hare Krishna Hare Ramas. Um, it, it, there must be powerful dynamics that are given with the initiation that augment or, or do the change. There must be, in other words, a new word, change agents mm, uh, given at the initiation. And in fact, they are given. There are five things which you come to, with, which you, when you go to the initiation, you have to learn five things. That only if you learn them and apply them will you change. If you don't learn them and don't apply them, you will only have an external change which will not 
change your heart, which will not transform you. So the first is you are inducted, you're brought into a particular process. It's called Urdva Pundra. It is a process uh, done, uh, which you learn in an old school, that brings your journey, your soul on a journey that goes upwards. Uh, this is symbolized or shown in the tilak. Those who are initiated in a certain school have a certain tilak, and they vary. In Vindavan, if you go, you will find many different types of uh, tilaks, which mean that this person is learning uh, uh, about his transformation and his mm, is, um, learning about Krishna. So usually in Vindavan, you find mostly Vaishnavas, but you find also, of course, Mayavadis and all kinds of spiritual practitioners, but mostly Vaishnavas, and they they have different different signs. It's a it, I think it would be an interesting book, photographic book, to just photograph the different tilaks and then give an explanation what they believe and what is different. So this, of course, you know, is the Gaudiya tilak. You should always have this tilak on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, otherwise you look like a de dead person. Yeah. This initiation is giving you new life by bringing you to a new path, and it's externally visible. Mm. Bing, 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 bing. This is a Godia. This is a Godia. He believes in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the chanting of the holy name, and and so on and so forth. Then at initiation, you are given tapa. Tapa means austerity, which. Uh, brings you away from material life. Therefore, uh, we, we are submitting in our initiation four rules and regulations, including no intoxication of any sort, and so on, and, uh, and illicit sex, and meat eating, and gambling, and so on. No? This is the second process which is given to you. Then comes Nama, but uh, interestingly, that's not your own name, like that Harald becomes Haridas. Uh, mm, that's not your, that's the name of Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Mm, Hari Haraye Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha. Mm. Gopal Govinda Ram, Sri Madhusuda. Not you're getting the names of God. And you get also your own name. Harald becomes Haridas. Mm, wonderful. Mostly it is said the initials of the old name are used for the, for the new name. I think that is because, uh, well, I don't want to speculate. Mm, it, it, it is like this. Then after some time you get a mantra, the Gayatri mantras, and finally you are also inducted. Inducted means brought into a process of workshop, it is called yagya, no? how you do the arati, uh, 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 starting with four circles to the feet, two to the stomach area, three to the head, and then seven times all around. This is a certain method which you learn, uh, and I really request all of those who have Brahman initiation and who wish to have Brahman initiation, to really learn this, um, become active in this fifth aspect uh, of yagya, worshiping. I have seen in our preaching party, uh, Go Krishna has started to worship Goparaj, a beautiful Shila, who, when you see him, he is <laughs> very, very beautiful. We call him Goparaj, Gopal our king. That is our na name for him, uh, so, and so on. So then when all these five are intact, you follow the path, you perform the austerities um, uh, in forms of rules and regulations, you chant the names, you learn the mantra when you are second initiation, and you worship Krishna. Then, my dear devotees, and only then, 
Will you become an extraordinary person and stop being an ordinary person? Transformation, y you can ask your, your heart if transformation has happened. There should be new thoughts and new feelings when transformation happens. Or your character should change. In other words, the lower nature of fault-finding, criticism, and so on becomes replaced and you are more tolerant. You become more kind to others. Or as the Bhagavatam says, yas yas di bhakti Bhagavat akinchana. In a devotee who practices Krishna consciousness, all the good qualities of even the extra, most extraordinary beings, the devatas, become manifested. You should see what is with your values, what is important for you. Yesterday I was joking with Jayaveda Maharaj. One devotee came to me. Was it with Jayaveda Maharaj or some? I, I don't, know. don't remember each one of my conversations. But there was a devotee who told, Guru Maharaj, I have finally get as gotten a stable job. And you know, my income has increased significantly. You know, I'm building now a house. And he talked on and on. And then I turned to him, oh, you're so poor. Oh, I'm very sorry for you. <laughs> oh, I, I can understand your misery. <laughs> if I will the other think of you, I can really understand. You must be totally in anxiety. No, Guru Maharaj, I have a job, I earn like anything. <laughs> My house, you know. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> you are on the wrong path of advancement. He just looked at me. He couldn't believe. On the wrong path? Yeah, uh, I, yeah I'm so sorry for you. You have not talked about how your taste for Krishna increases. You have not talked about how you lose these desires which pull you down in the circle of repeated birth and death. So the devotee, he could understand what I was doing. I wanted him to understand in a short time like this and sometimes Gurus are supposed to use the shocking method to wake, or not shocking is maybe not the word, waking people up, no? Utishta, they say, rise, rise, rise. Uh, and the devotee said, I'm so thankful. And there's only one person who talks to me like this. Uh, uh, I, therefore, I accepted you. I'm very thankful, yes. And I said, okay, let's, I'm happy for you that you're, you, you don't have to worry from your material life. But understand, this is only meant to assist the real things. And in a short time, we were like this, at the talking about the important things and how the, the things which are only of secondary importance, they're not, I'm not saying they're not important, should assist us in the most important things. Mm. So our material desires should go down and our spiritual desires and spiritual fulfillment should go up. You know? We should have a new type of taste where we like to sit in the kirtan and we uh, can absorb in our transcendental sound vibration for a prolonged time. We don't think, oh, I must run out here. It's too spiritual for me. I'm getting a... Mm, mm, it, mm, you know, no, no. All in all, Rupa Goswami describes the way of transformation uh, like this. The Shraddha, the initial faith, which is very komal, he describes. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, it's very soft, should become uh, nishta, very, uh, very uh, 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 strong. Uh, Keshava Maharaj did a little Sanskrit uh, thing and he said the word star in nishta, nishta means firm faith, 
unshakable firm. The word star is also in the, in the Indo-German or Indo-European languages. For instance, star means to stand, uh, it means to stabilize, it means stationary, and so on. Uh, it means basically fixed in one place. So you make advancement when you see how the most subtle thing which you have, the faith, becomes immovable, firm, fixed, unshakable, and serves as a plateau uh, for your spiritual life. Mm? Good. There are many, uh, th now I could go many roads. I have go <laughs> gone, you know, in lecturing, you, you establish something, so I try to establish the art of transformation by giving you the example from Hari Bhakti Vilas, and then I said, uh, what is necessary to affect this transformation? Uh, mm, the, uh, what is necessary to affect it? Um, uh, five pr principles, do you still remember? Uh, maybe we can all by collective intelligence bring them together. First, Urdhva Pundra, and this shows in the Tilak, that is also known as Urdhva Pundra, this sign. Second was Tapa, yes, some austerities, regulations, and so on, four roots is one of them. Then, Nama, refers to the holy names, and also you get your name, it is also important that you r relate to you. Then, Mantra, thank you, Gayatri Mantra, and all. And finally, yeah. Yagya, which refers to a process of yeah. worship. Very good. So that in itself can, can do this. I suggest that those of you who are, who are interested in transformation and who don't sit here only because of the extraordinary good prasadam, mm, but who have also this transformation idea or advancement in their life, I suggest those, it's a, short, a small percentage of you, I'm aware. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to motivate you a little here. <laughs> you think about this, what it could mean in your own life, because ultimately you have to be the one who transforms your heart. Uh, so then I wanted to say how you can measure it. Let's stay with traditional definitions, your character should change, your lower nature should go down, you should see how your material desires go down and uh, your spiritual desires go up. Once Prabhupada said, you can easily understand how much you are advancing by seeing how much attached you are for sex life. When you are a little attached, you are making advancement. When you are very attached still, after all these Years, you can see well, some, some more focus should be put on my spiritual life. Then the next, next parameter is taste. See how your taste uh, changes. And finally, it's really about your faith, no? what you have faith in uh, that should change. I always wanted to give one, uh, I, I, now I should give an example. This is when you give lecture. You, have, uh, you should give, uh, I'm also showing you what I've uh, learned. There's an art of giving lectures. You talk philosophically, but now you must give an example so that your audience sees what it means in real life. Mm, mm. And, uh, well, there is a very long example, but I'm always looking to the time. I tell it shortly. Uh, it is the said that the most attached people are the kings and the queens. They are surrounded by material, wealth, by servants, and so on. So there was once one 
queen called Surangi Maharani. She lived in the 16th century and was the queen of Kashmir. So one afternoon, when she was particularly bored, she sat on her sofa, ornate sofa, and asked her servant, can't you just tell me something to entertain me? I'm so bored, and evening is coming so after so many long days. Um, so the servant was actually a bridge bossy. And the servant said, yeah, I can tell you a story about, uh, you know, this young cow herder who fell in love with the, with the daughter of a king and a queen. Oh, said Surangi Maharani, that's interesting, because she was also a queen, and there was, and, 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 to, and there was some, and now she hears about how there was a boy who fell in love with the daughter of the queen. She asked, her, did, did, it, did it come to something? Oh yes, to many things, said the uh, servant, and started to explain about Radha and Krishna. And she talked every evening to about Krishna's pastimes. Well, one time she talked about how he lifted actually this huge Govardhan mountain. My dear devotees, it was tall like these mountains. We sometimes forget. Now Giriraj has sunk into the ground, but Gaga Samhita said it blocked the sun so that Mathura was in the shadow of Giriraj. I should speak more in the microphone. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you're becoming interested in this also, Ramananda, and uh, want to know. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm getting the ear of Ramananda here. <laughs> he wants to hear in detail. So, mm, no, I know you, heard, you listen to the other things also. Just a little humor is required sometimes. Uh, so, um, and, and once the... the, the servant said, you know, one time Radharani came by with her bevy, means many, many, many gopi maid servants. They were carrying pots of ghee for yagya, which was taking place at Govinda Kund, where Bhaguri Muni, the priest of Krishna, was um, performing a yagya for his safety and long life. So, so they came along and they passed uh, one particular part of Giriraj when all of a sudden Krishna in the most outrageous dress uh, which was ever seen jumped in the way of Radharani and said, stop, you have to pay tax here. So first Radharani ignored him. She just looked straight and continued to walk. But Krishna jumped again into her way. Don't ignore me. I'm the tax collector. So Radharani very indignant meek says, I have never heard of the need to pay tax here in Vindavan. Who gives you the authority? So Krishna said, the God of love, Kama Devi, Kama Dev. And Radharani goes back because he just said something outrageous. Mm. And Krishna points to the top of the Govardhan. There's a nice drawing of Govardhan. And there was a little tax collecting booth. I imagine it to, be, to have looked a little lit, bit like this, but, but closed. Mm. Closed, you know, not open arches. Here is the tax collector's booth. So, of course, this was uh, a, a beginning of a loving pastime where Krishna asked for amazing prizes to be paid. Um, remember, he said he acts on the authority of whom? Kamadev. So, his Kamadev is all about kisses, embraces, <laughs> all the things which made Radharani very angry and she would cover her, her eyes and, and at times look at Krishna 
with the she said no but her eyes seemed to say yes and okay so here's Surangi Maharani hearing all this and thinking wow this is the land of love I'm so uh, delighted to hear the pastimes and as she listened and listened and listened she actually developed the queen developed the desire to go to Brindavan but uh, um, her maidservant said the king will never allow it so one morning it was fog the eastern gate or side gate of the huge palace opened and a procession which were all veiled left secretly the palace mm, there was a palanquin there were land spears to protect the precious person who was carried in the palanquin and in this way Surangi Maharani secretly against the king's order uh, made her escape to Vrindavan Dam. She traveled to Vrindavan. And when she reached, after three months, she was so overcome with devotional feelings that she followed the method of Akrura. When Akrura came to Vrindavan, he jumped from his chariot and he touched with his head the uh, dust in which Krishna's footprints were still visible. So Surangi Maharani also hurriedly got out of the palanquin and um, paid her obeisances in the dust of Vindavan and rolled in the dust. But she had one desire. She wanted to go to Govardhan, to Dangati, where this pastime, where Krishna dressed in the outfit of a tax collector, mm, authorized by Kamadev where this took place and she asked the sadhus so when she asked the sadhus you must know she was smelling so nicely from a queen smell nicely um, she had uh, so much cosmetics and so many jewels the sadhus went uh, who, who, who are you <laughs> uh, what are you um, would you want to go to Dangati that is so not developed um, but the queen said, I'm a very fallen soul. I'm very poor. And I'm looking for the Lord of my life. So then the sadhus were convinced. It was not the first time that a princess or queen had come to Vindavan. So they pointed the way and they, the procession went to Vindavan to, sorry, to Dangati, where this pastime took place. The moment the queen saw this, she came out of the palanquin again and she started to dance and sing and dance and sing and dance for a long time. While she was dancing, all her ornaments flew off. Shoop, shoop, the gold jewels and went into the dust. And when she was done dancing, she walked away silently with tears in her eyes. A maidservant came and said, well, Queen, well, what is with your ornaments? She said, give this to the people here, the bridge buses. I'm not a queen any longer. A total transformation had happened in her just by hearing about Krishna and going to Vindavan and dancing uh, for the pleasure of uh, Giriraj. A transformation where she did not identify herself with the queen of Kashmir. But what she did is she thought herself a servant of a devotee, the, devo the devotees. And she, learn she got a jaru. Jaru means, you know, it's like a small hand broom like this. And she started to sweep the path around Giriraj every day. I don't think she, she completed the whole path because it's, it's rather long, but she, she swept parts of the path and, the path and then continued the next day with this short little hand broom. Now when her time came and she died, she, the sadhus discussed 
what to do with her, how to give her samadhi. And they decided to give her the full body samadhi. That is, they did not burn her, but they put her body into a samadhi, small little building, which is still there. And they placed the jaru on her chest. Because that is an instrument of seva. We all have services. I think when Madhava leaves his body, we have to put a medanga and a harmonium on his chest. Uh, maybe not, but I'm, I'm just saying, our instrument of service, that is, those things which we use to serve Krishna, are also our connection with Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, for instance, uh, said this Japamala is a connection to Lord Chaitanya. Uh, he said, when you touch the, the various uh, beads, you should think you're touching the lotus toes. Toes is the individual five toes. In, in, in Serbian language, you say the fingers, uh, foot fingers. But the toes, you touch and you, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Very personal connection. Your japa mala is actually your connection with Krishna. Prabhupada said that to Giriyaj Maharaj, it's what connects you to Krishna. It's the instrument of your seva. Therefore, japa should be taken seriously and not be done neglectfully. No, it's the, what connects you with Krishna. So mm, this queen, was it was so outstanding that a queen who has so many servants would personally sweep the floor so that there would be no sharp pebbles and, and thorns there for the feet of the pilgrims. It was so outstanding that the sadhus decided to put the jaru into, uh, give her the jaru with, with uh, uh. this idea we find even in Egyptian culture. When a pharaoh was put into the mm, pyramid, uh, that is his grave, Many things were given uh, to, uh, to him, um, but uh, because this was not such a God-conscious culture, in Egypt culture, I believe the Pharaoh was God or God-like. Uh, uh, therefore, he didn't get the instruments of seva. As I should not talk about it. I don't know much about uh, this hab habit of giving things to the Pharaoh. Pharaoh for his last journey. But here the, uh, the idea was the same, uh, but the, mo the most important item was given with the person and uh, the most important item for Suranga Mah Maharani was no more dress, it was no more cosmetics, it was no more servants, it was no more the other things. Her value, her desire had transformed and changed into that of a Vaishnavi, and therefore uh, the broom went with her. Fine, my dear devotees, how can we approach this exalted level? How can we achieve, achieve transformation? I would like to give you a traditional example which the Acharyas use uh, that helps you to do pr practically something in your life. Ha, do you know what is tuning? I will give you an example which you, that is easy to remember. What you need to do in life is you need to tune your personality, your conditioned being into the service of Krishna. It's a process. For instance, when you do kirtan, you need to tune your body into it, and more important, your mind. Your mind may be distracted, your mind may be unwilling, your mind may be tired, but you bring it, and you bring it to the same frequency that is in the kirtan, it's the frequency is the holy name. Let me give you an example of tuning the body. Uh, 
See, this is the sound D. I always have this ragini because I'm singing so bad that, but if I'm giving, uh, given the right tone, I, I know, okay, you'd stay with this. So if Anadi Radha with her violin wants to play D, she will need to tune her violin. Please start. G uh, stay, do, do this, do it a few times. Do you hear it's not the same? You have to make it more off because the devotee's ears are not trained. No, off means not nicht de, sondern spiel irgendwas, yeah. Can you hear there's a difference? Ka Ka Kamini goes, she, she has to know this, she has to also sing in tune. It's not the same, you can hear? Trying. Uh, yeah, then you are like me, a little tone deaf. It doesn't matter. You can become Krishna. Kaur. Now Anadi, uh, 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 without this, now Anadi Radha will tune until it's the same. We're getting there. Can you hear? Now it's correct. Yes? yes? Everyone or so so? Yes. yes. Don't say yes because the group says yes now. Can you hear it? Yes. You can hear. Good. Mm. My dear devotees, what did she do? She first needed to understand Ah, this is D. Ah, good. Then she needed to understand my instrument is not D. I need to do something with the instrument to make it D. And she had, uh, in German it's Wirbel. Was sagt man in English? No, the, the, the thing up there? Knob? Pegs, yes, the pegs. She used the pegs in German, the Wirbel, this is the black thing, show, which, which has the uh, um, strings. <laughs> and then she, what did you do? She, you, you, hast es angespannt, ne? You hast es hochgedreht? Ah, uh, tiefer hast es gemacht, ja. Yeah. She, she, either you put the, need to put the string, string on a lower frequency or by turning it this direction, you put it up. I see you're n not... Are you with me or not really? Yes. Good, good. <laughs> so, the same thing has to be done when you want to make advancement. You have to understand, okay, what's the D here? What's the ideal situation? Where should I come to? And then you need to tune your body and mind and heart, you need to bring it there. For instance, when you chant and your mind is not with the chanting, you need to see, okay, my mind is in um, thinking of going to bed maybe, or leaving the kirtan, or, or reading Asterix and Obelix, uh, and so on, uh, for a change, uh, and so on. Uh, so, no, this is, now I'm in kirtan, I need to tu bring my mind now to the sound vibration of the holy name. Or, let us say, you're discussing with devotees and you find yourself talking like ordinary people. You know, about cars, about mobile telephones, about the faults of others, mm, you know, the newest scandal, COVID yes, COVID no, this is ordinary subject matters. I'm, I'm giving uh, uh, 
sometimes we need to reflect about this, but when you totally think about these things, uh, or, or, or mundane subjects, you need to say, wait a minute, I'm with devotees now, we are worshiping Krishna, that's why I came on this path and have changed my hairstyle, and he has come and changed his name. Okay, so we are interested in the same thing. Let us talk about the thing. So let me fine tune my conversation and let me see. I can ask, for instance, what have you experienced on your path of Krishna consciousness the last year? I'm tuning myself in. I'm coming to the same frequency and so on. And if you learn this, in your life by asking yourself, am I in tune or am I out of tune at the moment? No? You, this is how you start. In a conversation, am I in tune with Krishna consciousness, my desired goal in life? No, so what can I do to tune it? You have to be very careful. Not that you say, you know, you're just discussing about Donald Trump and his chance to get the next presidentship of America, which, by the way, is very high. I learned from confidential sources, <laughs> and talking some at some things. Uh, then, my dear devotees, you see, okay, this we can talk briefly about it, but, but then let me see, how can I bring the discussion in a natural way there, not like you, you have a Donald Trump and then you say, okay, now we talk about Krishna. How is he dressed? The devote, but if it is not, there was Donald Trump. Now, how is Krishna dressed? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, I'm a human being. I, slowly, slowly, we need to change. No? But you need to see the art of fine tuning your life. You need to learn to do this, uh, your, your private life, into uh, this. You will see when you do it, you will fine tune everything. Even you will start to dream of Krishna. I have heard from devotees uh, after th they come to long kirtan events, let us say they have chanted six hours the holy name, their mind is so tuned in that th when they go to bed, they think of Krishna and of devotees. And they come the next morning and, and say, oh, wow, I had my first spiritual dream. Ah. Mm, and so on. No, fine tuning the mind is something you need to do and I thought this example, where the violinist fine-tuned her instrument to the right sounds, so that she can sing and that she can be in kirtan and not disturb the kirtan by dissonant sounds. No? That is a good example. My dear devotees, we need to become serious about fine-tuning our jokes, fine-tuning our Mm, our, our, our eating process, fine-tuning our relationships, fine-tuning our marriage, fine-tuning our education of our children, fine-tuning our whole life, because only then we will be fully happy when our inside is the same as our outside. When our outside is different from our inside, there is a din dissonance, and it is uh, very, uh, it is disturbing for us, and sometimes for others as well. Krishna. So my request to all of you is: you will go home. Where is home? You will go to your rented uh, living spaces, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where is home? Huh? Home is where we feel um, right. No? Uh, so you will go to your places and try to, s to think about this word fine-tuning. No? Just one word you can remember. You can put it even in your mobile telephone so that you don't forget it. Fine-tuning. And then work with this work, with this thing. It is will give you extraordinary results in a short time, extraordinary results. Mm. Today a, a devotee came to me and asked, any 
and he advises and so on. And I said, yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, tune your life, your entire life, your means your thinking, mm, your acting, your speaking, everything into the into the vibration of Krishna consciousness and you will see you will become very happy in a short time. Hare Krishna. But what do we have to find you? We have three three strings, so to say. <laughs> that's the body. Then that's the mind. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds like a like a sick dog, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, th that's our words, how we speak, and so on. And, and bring that on the vibration of Krishna consciousness. And it's it's a practice. It's a it's a something you can do every day. So Hare Krishna. I also want to take the opportunity. Well, let me see. I want to see I first. Is there a question to all of this? Uh, Prasida Nitai, we have a microphone for you, then it's good to see. Microphone is coming, coming. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, during the many exercises uh, while chanting, noticing that, uh, trying to be receptive to Krishna, but notice there was a certain uh, resistance to let Krishna take over the consciousness or to let the mantra in, so yes, to say. The resistance. And I think probably due to wanting uh, to keep control. So I want to reference two analogies you gave at different times. One you said uh, like an army landing at the shore yeah. and then gradually taking over Krishna. The holy names should be like that, yes, or and on landing on the shore of our consciousness, like, uh, yeah, we should let him invade our space, so to say, like in this in analogy, yes. And, and on the other hand, you gave the example of Draupadi, where Krishna could not come until she completely accepted him, so to say. So yeah. can we actually do anything about the resistance? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a very, very, very good question, Prasida Nitai. There are parts in us that still resist Krishna. I think we have to agree. Who are, because they know he will take over and <laughs> sit on the th uh, throne where now my ego sits. <laughs> and. Uh, The resistance stop when you begin to like Krishna. I would like to give the analogy. I had a friend, Lawrence was his name, very charismatic person. Mm, Lawrence, you, you must meet Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Lafrenz is his name, Lawrence Lafrenz. Uh, and uh, in the he was a strong person and uh, is a st he died, he, he, he was an adventurer, he died in, an, in one of his impossible advan ad adventures. Um, mm, he would not accept any limit in anything and that was his undoing in the end. I th uh, as far as I remember, I, from I heard from my friends, he he died when he was free climbing a di very difficult mountain and and the night before he had not slept much he had uh, he had not he was not in his normal form of alertness and then he made a mistake and and fell and fell to his death yeah lawrence mm. uh, when we became friends it was difficult for both of us because both of us had a strong mind and a strong personality. But I understood at one point, if I want to be the friend of 
Lawrence, I have to put myself a little bit, I have to be more, more, you know, take myself on the second place and not always demand that my way is the only way. And uh, I did this uh, and then I began to like him. He was very, very nice friend. He would do everything for you. He would get, he's the friend whom you call up at two o'clock in the morning and say, I'm not feeling well, can you please go to the emergency pharmacy and get a medi medicine? And of course, he would be in the car. And he's, he was such a friend, you know. Uh, and uh, um, there was not even, uh, he would not even say, of course, so what do you need? Tell me exactly. And then, you know, he's uh, such a friend, Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. Uh, so, and then I began to like him very much in the interaction. So in Sarana Bhakti, it's like this also. You put yourself on the second place for, uh, for some time. You do something just very selfless, like an aratik, like cooking for the devotees, co uh, doing something um, where you really are, you say, this is only for Krishna. So after doing this, and listen please, Learning more about Krishna, learning more about Krishna, how he is, how he is dressed, what he likes, what he does not like, mm, you know, learning more, you will, you will start to like him. And then it's easy. I think you, you have learned this also, Mo many of you are Grihastas. You have maybe learned to have a good relationship you need to serve the other person at times and not, and not lo look for your comfort, but look for the comfort of the other person. I think you know, you are, most of you are Grihastas. And then the relationship works and something like th this rare good, this rare quality of your yeah, human uh, affection can come. So I know this from my uh, uh, interaction with Lawrence. Oh, it was very difficult. But we committed to do this. We both wanted to be friends. So he had, he tolerated me, which is not easy. And he uh, tolerate, I tolerated his human things. So, so in service, what this means is we do selfless service for Krishna. And, and but don't stop there. Prasida Nitai, you must listen to about Krishna. Prabhupada says it's compulsory to listen about Krishna. If you don't do this, you put yourself in the dangerous cycle of birth and death. You, you must uh, hear about him so that you can get to know him and fall and, and, and begin to like him. And then you will give up this hesitancy or this resistancy. See, all of us are already disappointed in relationships. I think all of us by now had relationships to friends or girls or, or, you know, it, it, it's not restricted to only mm, uh, romantic relationships between men and women, no, th between uh, friends, you know, and I'm speaking not, not about, mm, uh, you know, normal friends, you know, mm, uh, um, uh, there, all we have been disappointed. We have been disappointed in Krishna consciousness with relationships. No, some we thought are very, should be very good, but they were not. Mm, we, mm, we felt exploited or misunderstood. We all are a little hesitant to give our heart. Mm, that's normal. And but but Krishna is good. Krishna is the Lord. Mm. He is Bhaktavatsala, the friend of the devotees. But you, n so don't deal with Krishna like you deal with any other relationship. But in order to not do so, you need to get to know him a little bit more. Chanting and learning. Therefore, I'm saying to everyone, please, my dear devotees, read every day the Bhagavatam. Or when you, if you miss, sometimes there are times when we are so full with different things, then, you know, as soon as possible. Right? Because then you can give up this hesitancy. 
amongst other things. My dear devotees, I will end here because I want to do two more things. I want to end with a kirtan, but before doing this, I want to thank you all very much. Uh, really, I had a very, very wonderful impression of this retreat. For me, I can genuinely say it was the best uh, retreat, uh, bhakti retreat, which I have so far um, observed. Uh, and I believe it is because we are all more hungry or more thirsty for Krishna consciousness after two years or maybe two and a half years of not having the opportunity to meet in, uh, amongst ourselves in these uh, in this greater m gatherings. Uh, it's very, 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 I'm very impressed by your sincerity also, how you are participating in the programs, uh, wonderful, mm, and uh, I'm personally very grateful. As always, I'm saying at the end of my preaching, mm, of my thing, I'm, I'm uh, sometimes speaking harsh words. I'm provocating you. I say to the group, uh, I know I, uh, this is only interesting for 5% of my audience. I do this as a means to invoke your interest. I, I'm not uh, wanting to offend you at all. So please forgive me if I sometimes l leave a bitter taste in your hearing channel, so to say. Um, mm, it is, uh, 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 yes, like this. Uh, I w would be very happy if you can mm, talk about your experiences to other devotees. See, we still have good place here. <laughs> and here, this whole area is there. And then we could put letters on the window that people can listen from outside. <laughs> this door can be opened. We have uh, double as many can fit easily, easily. Uh, double is maybe a little bit much, but uh, near to double. Uh, so please uh, tell the devotee if you found it uh, useful for you, please tell other devotees. And uh, yes, and I wish you certainly all the best. Mm, if I'm there to summarize what I want to give to you, there was this reverse thinking. Do you remember the Sanskrit? Pratipaksha Bhavana that is when you see that some negativity invades your thought processes, when you see that you are harassed by material thoughts, you mm, can, exp uh, you can uh, easily reframe yourself. You can, for instance, enter the mode of gratitude. From there, so many g uh, good things can come forth. Uh, and. Uh, that was one message I wanted you to give you, one thing. Mm. Oops, now, now my mind is in Zurich Airport. I'm sorry, it is no longer <laughs> with you. <laughs> I can only now remember the last point I made, fine-tuning, no? Fine-tuning your, your various uh, parts of your personalities, your various violent strings, so to say, body, mind, and speech. No? Mm. <laughs> Wish us well, Gokishna, me, because I hear it's very full, and, um, but we will find. <laughs> By now we are experienced. Good. So let us make one concluding little kirtan, seven minutes, and then I request you, if you want to be kind to me, please allow me to leave. I, I, I cannot talk to anyone any longer. Even if it's an urgent question, I won't reach in time. You have to find a, a way. Best is to write a conventional letter if it is necessary and mail it to the Schloss, uh, Schloss Krenzlin and so on, my postal address. But uh, please, uh, uh, only, only please bless me only when I pass by you, then I can go. Uh, Hare Krishna.
everyone, chant with me. Namo. Namo Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Doravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Askatya Deshatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Shali Now, 
Gauranitai, Daya Gauranitai, Gauranitai, Daya Gauranitai. Jaya Radha, Shama Sunda Radha, Shama Sunda Siddhadhe. Jaya Radha, Shama Sunda Radha, Shama Sunda Radha, Shama Sunda Siddhadhe. Hare Krishna! <laughs> My dear devotees, I have a, a very nice surprise in parting. Uh, I will mm, request Padma uh, to come here. Uh, I would like to meet you to meet Padra, um, Padma and bless little Padra. Padma. She will give you Mahaprasadam when you pass through the exit there. Um, uh, I have uh, Mahaprasadam from Shishi uh, Radha Madhava in Mayapur and from Radha Raman. So you can all take this. Padma, du musst vielleicht ein bisschen überlegen, wie du von dieser roten Fliege was abkriegst. Du musst es machen, was gibt denn das mal da so weiter. Ja? Am besten kannst du nicht viel sagen. Hare Krishna. Good. <laughs> Then, all the best. See you hopefully very soon. Maybe for Jamashtami in Goloka Dam. Wow! This would be, we, we are trying to do something extraordinary and there may be a drama. Ah, yeah, one, one of these good dramas. Uh, Hare Krishna. All the best and Hare Krishna.